continuous load path. The two mistakes that I'm gonna talk about in this continuous load path are part of the lateral system that gives you lateral strength and redundancy in your building. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, well, let me explain that a little bit. The continuous load path is an engineered route for the forces that act on your building to travel. And the goal is, is for all the forces to travel through your structural members and through the connections down to the foundation and into the soil where the soil can dissipate those forces. And those forces include vertical forces like the weight of the roof, snow, cold required live loads. And it also includes horizontal forces such as wind, earthquake. I see these areas quite a bit and by not providing these details can significantly reduce the redundancy and the resilience of your home in a high lateral events such as high wind. To explain the purpose of this blocking, I need to explain the load path when a lateral force like wind pushes on your house. Some of these forces go directly into the foundation and some of these forces will travel up and into your roof sheathing, assuming this is a single story building. Then the roof sheathing will distribute those forces into the walls. Now, where your rafter or your truss bears on your wall, there will be a gap where your top plate is and where the sheathing is. So we specify this blocking that goes in between that space that allows for those lateral forces in the sheathing to be transferred into that blocking and then from that blocking into the top plate. Now, without this blocking, that means you're relying on your truss or your rafter to transfer that force into the wall. There's gonna be some twisting action that occurs in the rafter or the truss, but you don't want to ever allow twisting in order to transfer a force into one portion of the building into another. That's just not good practice. And yes, in some cases it may be okay and you probably never had any issues with it. But my point is that this inexpensive piece of blocking provides so much more value to your home in the sense of structural integrity. It's not always about having the strong enough connection that can do the one job. It's about having multiple ways for your structure to be able to do something in case one connection was installed incorrectly or some freak incident happens. And if you're worried about the roof not being vented, just drill some holes in the blocking. It's gonna be fine. So the top plate, contrary to your belief, doesn't just support the roof or floor framing. This top plate is the element that helps transfer those lateral forces that come from the blocking that we just talked about into the sheathing in which the sheathing is the element that resists those lateral forces. I'll see walls built in eight or longer foot lengths, but then what I'll see are the top plates not being spliced at these joints in between the wall. So in many cases, I'll see this section of wall where we have this big opening and then two walls on both sides of it that will act as shear walls. Without having those two spliced together, there's nowhere for that force to go. So that wall with the large opening has no choice but to take on that force. And that's where in some cases I've seen after a high wind event, these large pieces of glass is having cracks in them and you can trace it back to the top plate not having a splice where that force can travel somewhere else where the shear wall can take on those forces. So whether you're using a double top plate and you're overlapping the joints and putting the correct number of nails in between those joints, or you're using a single top plate and you're using a splice plate to connect those plates together, either option is fine, but for the sake of not breaking your continuous load path. Splicing the top plate is critical for a laterally stable and rigid home. So none of this information is truly groundbreaking, but I wanted to explain it from a structural standpoint because it's truly these small details that make the biggest difference on whether your home is resilient to high wind or not.